Blog Talk Radio. And liftoff, liftoff on another Tarot Today radio episode here on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dax Carlisle, coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. I'm a certified life coach, clinical hypnotherapist, tarot advisor, and numerologist. And joining me, as always, is my fabulous co-host, Mary Brown. She's a certified tarot master, crystal Reiki master, and the vice president for certification for the Tarot Guild. And here she is, live from Amarillo, Texas. Mary Brown. Hey, Mary. Hey, Dax. Hey, everybody. Happy Psychic Saturday. It's exciting. Here we are. We have an exciting show. I'm so excited about today's show. Oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. First, uh, I want to mention something because a, a few folks were asking me about our intro music because it's different from the rest of the network. And uh, this is actually uh, a track called The Fool from Rajan Paquin. He's a French composer, uh, Canadian, French-Canadian composer who created an album back in the early 2000s called Tarot with 22 tracks, each track for one of the 22 major arcana cards in Tarot. And so we use... uh, the Fool as our intro and outro music on this show because it's Tarot Today Radio. So to let everybody know about that, and if you want to check it out, go over to thetarotguild.com forward slash music. Thetarotguild.com forward slash music. There's links to Rajan's pages and other places you can acquire the album. I love the album. I just thought I'd mention that really quick. And uh, as everybody knows, we are a live call-in show, and uh, we usually do open lines and readings uh, all show long on most of our shows. Sometimes we have a topic. Today we have a guest. So we're going to be doing our mini readings in the second half of the show. But you can call in now and get your spot in the caller queue if you want to hang on. It's up to you. Or you can call back in 30 minutes. <laughs> Mary, you want to give him the phone number? Yes, that number to call is 714-816-4628. Again, it's 714-816-4628. Remember to press 1 on your dial pad so we know you want to be on the air. Awesome. Plus, you can join us on the chat post and chat with us live during the show. We have posts on our Facebook group, and there's a URL that will take you right over there. It's psychictalk.net forward slash chat, and you can get into the – it's a post on Facebook, but in the comments, use it like a chat room. Just type in there, and we can chat back and forth. You can ask for a mini reading in the second half of the show. Just pop in your question. Maybe you can't call in. You can just pop it in there. We'll read it on air and do a mini reading for you, and you can – Uh, discuss the show and the topic and everything like that. It's psychictalk.net forward slash chat. We'd love to chat with you. So, Mary, oh, my God. (laughs) I've been waiting for this. The Star Trek Tarot. 
I'm a big I know. trucker going back to 1960s. Yeah, I'm old folks. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, do I you self-identify my... as a trucker? You self-identify yes. as a trucker. Okay. Yes, I was. Cool. I was an original Trekkie, and then we started calling ourselves Trekkers. And uh, I remember I went to my first convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was twelve, twelve, maybe thirteen oh. years old when I went to my first Star Trek convention. I have pictures of me with a, a, a jacket that I got there that uh, it, it's blue. It's the uh, the uh, looks like um, Spock's shirt, you know, Spock and McCoy. And, um, uh, yeah. Oh my God. Brings back I, memories. I'm telling you. I'll tell you, I would love to go to a Star Trek. I've never been to one of those. I I'm just a fan, not a trekker. I did when I was working in Hollywood, I did cover the tribute to James Doohan before he died. And I got my first dose of the trekker world. And <laughs> I'll tell you, it, you know, it's, those costumes are amazing. I mean, they have to be expensive because they look so real. The mm-hmm. the, the fan that the trekkers wear and everything. But I had I had no idea um, how intense um, right. you know, the that that fan base in is. But oh my gosh, they're like the coolest people ever, though. It was so much fun. Yeah. And uh, for those that uh, don't remember or don't know. Uh, Mary was a Hollywood reporter, so she interviewed all these folks. Anyway, but we digress. Let's bring on the creator of the Star Trek Tarot, Mark Baum. We're bringing him on right now. Hey, Hi, Mark. how are you doing? Oh, Welcome. Great. <laughs> calling in from calling in from Minneapolis. Oh, you're in Minneapolis. Awesome. Yes, and we're going to call Mark Adam. <laughs> yes. I forgot already. Yeah, yes, yes. I answered to both. We're good. <laughs> okay. That's funny. So, Adam, <laughs> I have a question. Just you know, <laughs> how in the world? Like, was this something that you always kind of thought of doing? But how did the idea of this come up for you? Like, what's your connection between Star Trek and Tarot? And how did you, how did you see those two kind of? you know, really fit together? Well, um, I'll take a few minutes and give you a little bit of my backstory here. Uh, like you, I grew up watching the original show in the 60s and was an original first uh, uh, first generation first Star Trek fan before <laughs> there were other generations. Um, my first convention experience was in 1976 in New York City. So um, that was a pretty big deal for me. I was uh, in high school at the time, so I'm sure I'm even older than you folks are. Um, but So I've been a lifetime Star Trek fan, but also I recognize that there are fans and there are fans. And while yeah. I've been a fan of the show and uh, I, I like you know reading the books and watching the shows and, and chatting about the trivia and so on, if you walk into my house, you're not going to see Klingon posters on the walls and, and you know, uh, <laughs> Star Trek decorations everywhere. Um, I, I, the, the parallel that I draw with people is uh, in sports. I have a lot of sports friends here in Minneapolis. I have a lot of Vikings fans. My family is from Wisconsin, so I have a lot of friends who are uh, uh, Packers fans. And sometimes you'll walk into their house and it's sports memorabilia everywhere. <laughs> um, but... <clears throat> but, you know, um, in the fandom world, uh, fandoms try to coexist. Uh, the the different sports teams often have much more fierce rivalries than you get in the fandom world. Star Trek and Star Trek fans, Star Trek fans and Star Wars fans get along better at the conventions than you would think. Harry Potter's fans, Lord of the Rings fans, Doctor Who fans. There's a lot of fandom out there. And I have friends in a lot of different social circles. Um, I have friends who are lifetime uh, tarot uh, readers and uh, tarot collectors, and I had been learning about the tarot through them, uh, even though I'm Mm -hmm. not a reader myself. So it was because I have a finger in, you know, a lot of different uh, uh, social circles and friends in a lot of different fandoms that uh, years ago I was just sort of thinking about uh, what I could do for uh, uh, Christmas gifts to uh, give to some friends of mine. And I came up with this idea of taking the 78 
tarot cards and matching them one to one with the 78 original Star Trek episodes. Kirk, Spock, McCoy, wow. the original series before Next Gen and, and Deep Space Nine and all the other spinoffs. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, it, it quickly became a research project because when I first started uh, creating this for my tarot friends, I knew a little bit about the tarot. I knew the general structure of the deck. I knew the meanings of some of the cards, but I wasn't deeply immersed in all of the details and all of the history and all of the, you know, the, the whole uh, uh, world of tarot. And if it was something I wanted to make as a gift for friends, it's something that I needed to be able to uh, do that research and build into the deck. Because if you're going to build a deck for someone, you have to respect uh, the person that you're giving it to. You have to respect the source material. Uh, I wouldn't want to make a Star Trek or a Star Wars gift for a friend that didn't look like, uh, you know, you, you've seen bad uh, fan art. You've seen, you know, bad drawings of yeah. the Enterprise where the proportions are all wrong. You've seen bad Star Wars drawings where, you know, and I didn't want to do anything that would disrespect the source material Star Trek or disrespect the uh, tarot reader friends of mine who I was planning to give these to. So... My initial light bulb idea for, you know, a Christmas gift that I could just sort of put together uh, turned into a lengthy research project that uh, <laughs> became spreadsheets and, and, you know, books and, and Internet pages. And, and you know, I, I immersed myself in the world of tarot probably for two years, reading information from dozens of sources and, and building uh, my deck and building the, the backstory behind all the cards and everything. So by the time I finally put ink to paper, the first few decks that I printed, I just printed out at, you know, Kinko's or some print shop and uh, put them in some plastic boxes I got off of eBay and gave them out to uh, a bunch of my friends as Christmas gifts, um, tarot friends and some of my Star Trek friends here in the Twin Cities. And I thought that would be the end of it. I thought I did this cool thing. I made this cool gift. I gave it to a bunch of friends. I'm done. <laughs> No, Not so um, because it wasn't long <laughs> after that that uh, friends of friends and their friends of friends started approaching me in January and February and March. Where did you get these? Where did you buy these? Where can I buy some more of these? Where can I get some of these to give to my friends? And, well, I just made them and printed them. And King goes, no, you didn't. Well, sure I did. Uh, look, here's the files on my computer. And so basically everybody piled on and convinced me, no, 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 you have to turn this into a professional product and sell it for real in the real world. Yeah. So that's how oh the whole thing gosh. got started. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, started out really as a fan project. A wow. <laughs> you put a lot of thought into your Christmas gift. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I will tell you that yes. the very first cards that I made, the, I the, want the him Christmas to gift cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But if, if you saw those Christmas gift cards, they were DVD frame grabs that I added text and graphics above and below, and I printed them on poker-sized cards because that was the the cards that I had available and the boxes I had available. So they were technically tarot cards, but they weren't really full bore all the way 100% tarot cards. You know what I mean? The yeah. concept was there, and the design, the matching of the cards to the episodes and the imagery was there, but the complete 100% tarotness of the design was still very much lacking. So that's why when my friends convinced me to pursue turning it into a full product, and uh, uh, some of them joined forces with me, and we incorporated. We formed this company, and then uh, we went to New York City and met with some of the licensing people at CBS who own the rights to Star Trek. And they all said they loved the concept, they loved the design, they loved the uh, the, the whole idea of a Star Trek tarot deck. My Kinko's cards, yeah, not so much. So, <laughs> and I said, yeah, this is a concept. This is this is a prototype. But they also encouraged us to pursue finalizing it into a complete full tarot design. And right. that took yeah. a while longer. That took quite a while longer oh, because sure. uh, I needed to find an artist who could re-illustrate the cards in the style that I had in mind. Uh, I wanted someone I who would... I love the style, uh, by the way. 
Yes, and this was this was something it it took me another couple of years to hunt around for because I talked to friends in the local uh, art community, uh, graphic artists, comic artists. I went to some of the comic conventions. I went to the local universities to their art departments and spoke to some of the people there. I went to the local, you know, uh, fandom and comic book stores and talked to artists there. And there are a lot of comic book artists that will draw in a comic style, but I wanted the artwork to reflect the actors in the original show. I didn't want it to be caricature or cartoony. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's and, actually and yet at the same a realism time, to it. It's, it's gorgeous. The realism. Right. And yet at the same time, I absolutely wanted to maintain the fact that they were illustrations. They are line drawn, inked drawings that are then watercolored to bring them to three dimensional life. And it took me a while before I found an artist that, understood the the style that I was looking for, could deliver that style, and was willing to work with me on all 80 illustrations as opposed to just committing to a few and then moving on, like some artists get bored with a project like of this scope. Um, Alan Tur, the fellow that uh, did my illustrations, uh, he worked with me for over a year, one card at a time. Uh, I would take, uh, for instance, a frame grab of a character from an episode and when you watch the show, when you watch a TV show, uh, TV images are formatted, for lack of a better word, wide ways. And tarot yeah. cards are obviously formatted tall ways. And if you take a screen grab from a TV show and crop it down to the point where it fits on a tall ways card, you're losing so much of the resolution and so much of the detail. And it really yeah. starts to look terrible. And so one of the things that we did was, um, one of the things that I did in working with this artist was uh, I would take, uh, for instance, a close-up of an actor's face from one scene and an image of the actor in costume from head to toe in another scene and backgrounds from another scene and other characters from other scenes and sort of cut and paste them together like uh, like a ransom note yeah. and give this paste up to my artist who would then paint the whole illustration as one coherent illustration. So as you look at the card, you never know that it came from, from, you know, six different images from the episode. But the important thing is they are all images from the episode. They are all accurate to the episode. I, we strived very hard to make it look like they were just a single frame grab. You, you know, you're not supposed to know that we're doing this little behind the scenes thing as a, uh, as a way of getting there. It kind of tells us what episode each card's from. Oh yeah, we have um, we have a, a tutorial manual. Uh, understand that when these cards sell to tarot users, people who are experienced uh, tarot practitioners, they'll know the meanings of the cards and the history of the cards and and all of the layers of interpretations. Yeah. If I sell these to Star Trek fans, most Star Trek fans are not going to know a lot of this stuff. So yeah. one of the very first things I did as part of my gift years ago with my poker cards was I made a little uh, flyer that accompanied the cards that explained why this card was matched with this episode and, and so on. And as we turned the deck into a fully professional deck with full uh, illustrated artwork and full tarot sized cards, we also uh, rewrote that flyer into a full uh, tutorial guide. It's like 120 pages. Uh, it has a section on tarot history up front for people, for fans, Star Trek fans who've never, uh, uh, you know, immersed themselves in tarot like I hadn't before I started this project. Uh, it has a section on uh, layouts for beginners uh, because I certainly have no experience with any of that. And it has the bulk of the book. There's a page devoted to every single card explaining in a couple of paragraphs the traditional meaning of the card by itself uh, a little bit about the episode that was chosen and why the two of them are a good match. Awesome. Yeah, I really love the that boxing is... too. The boxes look great, and the limited edition with the tricorder box, that's just brilliant. Idea. <laughs> it's just totally brilliant. Thank you. I worked very hard on that. That's, uh, uh, that's a design that I'm very proud of. One of um, one of my friends that I that I told about, you know, that, that there's a Star Trek tarot, um, asked probably a question that probably, you know, would be a normal question to ask is like there a card that comes from the Trouble with Tribbles episode. Of course. <laughs> that's oh, of course. So popular. 
<laughs> of and course. We, which one is that one? As I've, well, because our deck matches every episode one to one with every tarot card, um, it's a natural thing for people to do who first find out about this. And and I've run into this on uh, the Facebook and and uh, uh, Reddit and other online forums. The first thing people start doing is uh, guessing. Well, what did you match up with this? And how did you match that up? And sometimes I'll give them a direct answer. And sometimes I'll say, Well, how would you match that up? And why do you think is this a good match or is this a bad match? And it really helps to sometimes the tarot practitioners may not know the Star Trek episodes that well. So this is an mm. opportunity for, you know, tarot readers to learn a little bit more about the depth of the Star Trek episode that's matched with that card, or for a Star Trek user to learn a little bit more about the history of the card that's associated with that episode. So I, I, I think it's that. a terrific uh, way for people in both directions to learn more about the other. I love that. So, so it's I'm going to pose that coin. question to you. You could go on our, you could go on our <laughs> okay. website and you could cheat and look it up. But I'm going to ask you, what card would you put the trouble with tribbles on? And then I'll tell you where we put it and why. Hmm. The trouble with tribbles. Oh, Dax already gave it away. <laughs> I gave it away. Oh. <laughs> when, when I, so I'm thinking like, okay, yeah, I can see that, and I'm trying to, you know, but I, I think in a way that episode. To me, and granted, it's been years since I've seen it. It's kind of like this idea of like when you, you know, kind of it's like excess, you know, and, and yes. sometimes mm -hmm. you yes, because exactly. Know, so what tarot card? Trouble. What 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 tarot card do you speaks the most of overabundance, of excess over and abundance, and it, it, yeah, abundance. it would be the. It would be the the ten of pentacles because the tens often, you know, to me like are like okay, this is as many as you can have, <laughs> you know, because the the fifth and, cards only go up to ten. <laughs> and that it's is brilliant. indeed exactly where we put the trouble with tribbles. We call it the ten of coins. That's awesome. It's yeah, brilliant. I think it's... people are going to love this. This is amazing, really. <laughs> And by the way, before we go any further, uh, I neglected to give out the website. We got to do that right away. It's Star Trek Tarot.com. Star Trek Tarot.com. Yep, go we, over there uh, and you can click on gallery and check it out. Go ahead, Adam. You were going to say? Um, <clears throat> well, if since we have some time on the air here, if you'd like, I can tell a little story about one card in particular that uh, uh, has a little bit of a backstory to it. Uh, while, <clears throat> while we were in the process of re-illustrating the entire deck and fine-tuning the little fiddly bit details of the graphics, uh, we add little... Um, uh, it's hard to explain this on the radio without being able to point to a, an image, um, but uh, because, for example, Kirk buried up to his armpits in Tribbles is the iconic image from that episode, but we don't add tarot imagery into the Star Trek imagery. So the Ten of Coins doesn't have Kirk holding ten coins, or the Eight of Cups doesn't have somebody holding cups, or the Six of Swords doesn't have somebody holding six swords, that sort of thing. We leave the Star Trek mm. image to speak for itself, and we decorate with additional little symbols and glyphs and uh, icons and, and things that uh, stand for. There's an index in the back of the tutorial explaining, you know, what the symbols all stand for. Uh, so that information is still at the fingertips of a reader if they if they need it. But we were in the process of doing all this. We were about halfway through the deck, and uh, I attended a tarot. Uh, conference, a uh, convention here in the Twin Cities. And one of my tarot friends uh, who has been bringing me these events said, oh, I have somebody that you want to meet. I have to bring you into this separate meeting room because there's this person that absolutely you need to talk to. And it turned out to be one of the uh, key speakers at the uh, tarot conference. I'm not giving out any names. It's not important who this was. Uh, but my friend dragged me into this room and dragged this other uh, important VIP person into the room and said, you need to show her what you're working on. I'm like, okay. So I opened up my laptop and said, uh, all right, yeah, my friend has told you that I'm working on a design of a new tarot deck and, and 
the, the the VIP person was. They love that because it really, the people who design a new deck almost need to immerse themselves more into the history and the layers of the meanings and the subtleties of the meanings of all of the cards. Otherwise, it's just, you know, a throwaway. It's a gag gift. Yeah. And uh, so this this tarot VIP uh, wanted assurance that I was doing that. And I was explaining to her that, yes, I've spent years doing this research and so on. Why don't you ask me about a particular card? And she said, I want to see your hanged man. Mm. Because that is one of the cards that historically has been the most difficult to interpret. And as you follow the history of the card over the centuries from Renaissance Italy through, you know, uh, its reinterpretations and redrawings and re-illustrations, uh, it suffers more than a lot of other cards from this this problem of, I guess you call it telephone tag, like little kids that one person tells the second kid a story, who tells the third kid a story, who tells yeah. the fourth kid. And by the time you get to the tenth kid, the story doesn't resemble its original story anymore, right? Right, the, right. the hanged man has suffered from that terribly over the centuries because as the original meanings that, that originated in Renaissance Italy – sort of fell away from pop culture over the centuries. Like I could say to you right now, picture a fat man in a white beard and a red suit, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. But 600 years ago in Renaissance Italy, that image would mean nothing. Whereas in Renaissance Italy, many of the images that are on the major arcana cards were instantly recognizable in the pop culture of the day. And over the centuries, now they're obscure and nobody knows what they mean anymore. The hanged man is one of the worst of those. So, Going back to its original, original meanings, it was intended as a public humiliation punishment, much like a a low-level criminal would be put in the stockades and humiliated in the public square. For some reason, the stockades is a thing that modern culture still recognizes. But a richer person, a white-collar person, a person of stature who broke a business deal or betrayed a confidence or betrayed someone – had to have a more erudite punishment, but still needed to be humiliated in public. And so the idea of being hung upside down by a tree in public was the humiliation that was intended for class member of society that still had to suffer the humiliation of a betrayal or a broken trust. Yeah, like traitors, I think, is is one of the things. Yeah. And so... In matching that with the Star Trek episodes, there is a Star Trek episode in which Mr. Spock goes down to the surface of the planet and he gets shot by one of the plants and the poison infects him and it messes with his mind. And he basically stops obeying orders. Kirk comes down to the planet and says, hey, Spock, I need you to do this stuff. And Spock just literally looks at him in the face and says, no, I don't want to. You can't make me. And at one point, he and his – he actually picks up a girlfriend on the planet. This shows you how you know doped up he is on the uh, – the <laughs> messed up by the, uh, by the plants. Uh, they're climbing trees, and he's swinging upside down from tree branches like you know a little kid. Yeah. And so I, I took this image of Spock literally swinging and hanging upside down from a tree branch, and it's straight out of the episode. I didn't have to modify it at all to put it on the Hanged Man card. Wow. And it also perfectly symbolizes the betrayal yeah. that Spock is doing when he is refusing to obey Kirk's orders and refusing the chain of command and saying, no, I'm not going to obey your orders. No, I don't want to do that. Go away. Another perfect And so matchup. it is such a perfect image and a perfect match of the episode and the image and the meanings of the card. So I didn't say any of this to the lady at this uh, tarot conference. I simply pulled up the image and showed it to her and she looked at it. She only asked to see that one card. I pulled up that one image and showed it to her and she said, Oh my God, you have to finish this deck. You have to finish this deck. I want to buy this deck (laughs) because she could tell just from that one card that I had done my homework and I knew what I was talking about. And that this is a card, this is a deck that would not only respect Star Trek, but would also respect the tarot and all of the layers of meanings and its history. Yeah. Do you know, it's really interesting. One core belief I think I have about, and I guess I have a few about tarot, and that is that, you know, if you, if you really 
studying it, and you can really reach an understanding where it's not just what's depicted on the cards anymore, that you can see those, we can call them archetypes, play out in real Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you're seeing it play out in, you know, these Star Trek episodes, and it's really so fascinating because... You know, from what I'm understanding, from what you're saying, we don't have the traditional uh, imagery of the suits, you know, or let's say, you know, you don't have the coins, you don't have the swords or whatever. You have, you have the glyphs maybe that, you know, let us know what suit this is. But even more so, you've created your own uh, system of correspondence here. You didn't just create a deck. You've, you've created well, correspondences. We've, we've- We've tried to respect the imagery when possible. There are quite a few, uh, there's a couple of uh, cards in the cups suit, for instance, in which a character is holding a cup. There are actually uh, six or seven cards in the blades suit in which a character is literally holding a blade. It's hard to maintain that for the entire uh, 14 cards in that suit. That's easy to think of. He is our ace of blades. Everyone knows that image of Sulu with his foil. He is our ace of blades. Um, So we we try to respect that as much as possible. But it felt wrong to, like I said, uh, insert uh, 10 swords into the image of Kirk and whoever's on the 10 of swords card. Uh, It just, it didn't feel Star Trek, even though it's tarot. We had to sort of find the right balance between those two. Um, We do call our suits. Rods, cups, blades, and coins. Um, but other than that, yeah. uh, they use uh, yeah, the, the actual um, associations, the uh, uh, seasons, the energies, uh, the genders, the uh, all of the uh, uh, astrological associations. Uh, we did all of the research. We followed as closely as possible. We did make, all right, I will admit, one or two tiny little changes from uh, – uh, from tradition, but uh, I, I think some card makers have to do that in order to make the deck their own. Uh, yeah. But we had specific reasons for doing them. Uh, you know, little tiny minor 21st century updates from the original Golden Dawn interpretations. Uh, and we think they they suit the cards, so to speak. You know, I think that that's what we... I think that, you know, as readers and collectors and stuff, I mean, that's really, that's what we are asking for from from deck creators is to put some thought in it. You know, if you want to make a unicorn deck, don't don't just stick a bunch of unicorns on it. Ha- have a reason for them being there, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have, you know there, what I mean? Because, if, if, uh, deck, we, I mean, deck can tell you we've seen so many Rider Waite clones that, it doesn't look like any thought went into them, unfortunately. I'm sure it did, but it didn't yeah, did give us and we, extra. Right. And like I said, we do add these little icons up in the corner of the card if the reader wants to use them, but they're not in your face. The overall image yeah. of the card, Spock hanging from the tree, is the dominant image on that card. Kirk up to his elbows, you know, up to his armpits and tribbles is the dominant image on that card. And so you don't need to dive into the little... Uh, symbols in the corners in order to get the meaning of the card. Uh, I yeah, think one of the strengths of the deck those, is that though. people they're there if you want them but I think one of the strengths of the deck is that the more that Star Trek fans use the deck the more they will appreciate the layers of the tarot meanings and the more yeah. that tarot users use the deck the more that they will come to understand the layers of meanings in the Star Trek episode like that backstory of why is Spock hanging from the tree there's a whole yeah, story. Right. There's a whole episode based on that that uh, in that informs and connects to the meanings, uh, the historical meanings of the card, and we think that works well for pretty much every card in the whole deck. I like how you have it uh, on the minor arcana, uh, uh, well, in all of them, but you know, just uh, written up in the right hand corner, seven of coins, for instance. You know, so somebody that's a tarot person and might not be familiar with the imagery yet and they're working on it and that's a, a really helps out. But uh, what are all the other symbols on the cars in the different corners? And, you know, if you could kind of explain that. 
Uh, well, let's see. Let me pull up a card so I know what I'm looking at here. Um, what card are you looking at? Sure. <laughs> oh, I got a bunch of them up here, but uh, I was just looking at the seven of coins, for instance. Okay, let me pull that up so we're talking about the same one. Seven of coins. Galileo, Galileo um, 7, yeah. Galileo 7, uh, delay, because, boy, these poor guys sure got delayed. Um, <clears throat> okay, the uh, – boy, uh, give me a second here. Um, the four – Minor Arcana suits have uh, four energies. There's uh, uh, one is is uh, all right. Give me. I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Give me just a second. You're, you're catching me by surprise, but I will get my file up. That's okay. If you just I do want to mention also for everybody here. for everybody listening out there that when the cards are upside down, if you use reversals, uh, the little meaning that's on there is. Uh, you can read it upside down. You can uh, read the meaning for upside down and then right side up. There's uh, another meaning, which is really nice too. A nice little add on there. Yeah. We tried to um, uh, keep the major information bold and easier to read and the lesser information, for instance, the inverted keywords or the uh, tree of life diagrams are in muted colors. So they're less bold than the, uh, most important meanings. Um, one more file here, and then I'm. <laughs> if you can vamp for a second. <laughs> oh, the final yeah. show, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm looking at you know through the through the gallery on your website, and it, and again, that's. Um, what is the website? I'm looking at telekiad.com. Yes, it, that's our right, one, that's one everyone to go company to. name that we incorporated. The company name that we incorporated is Telekiad, and that's composed of fragments of letters from the names of the four of us who founded the company years ago. Uh, boy, you try to make up a company name that doesn't already exist on the internet, right? Right. But the <laughs> that's Star right. Trek Tarot, StarTrekTarot.com will take you to Delekiad.com, so you don't have to remember this weird, goofy uh, company yes. name. Um, right. All right. I am right here. So... Uh, I'm going to read you a little excerpt from our tutorial here. Uh, the suited cards display symbols for the suit realms of energy, emotion, intellect, or work. So, for instance, when you were looking at the, uh, what were you looking at? Uh, seven of seven of coins. Yeah. Seven of coins was it? So there's a little gear symbol there that is meant to represent work. Uh, on the other suits. Uh, for example, the uh, symbol for energy is a lightning bolt. The symbol for emotion is a heart. The symbol for intellect is a little light bulb. <clears throat> um, it, uh, the suit Great. symbol or the suited cards contain symbols for the four seasons: spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Uh, compass directions: north, south, east, and west. Uh, uh, genders: masculine and feminine. Uh, the four. Uh, uh, ancient elements Element. of earth, air, wind, and fire. Um, astrological associations, uh, uh, um, planets, constellations. Um, if you're looking at, uh, shoot, where did that go? There it is. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, seven of coins, for instance, uh, you'll be seeing uh, Venus in the constellation of Virgo. So Virgo is the predominant symbol, and the Venus symbol will be in a lower, uh, less prominent color. Is that all making sense? It is all making sense. Yep. What I love looking looking through this is the um, the use of color to to kind of denote the suit. The you know a lot of a lot of us will look at that and we'll easily just see immediately what is you know the fire suit you might say, or what and is this the is another th this is another mm -hmm. thing that helps make the join of Star Trek and Tarot something that you know who in the world would think of putting Star Trek and Tarot together, but boy, you. even the colors, the four <laughs> colors of the four main suits match the four mm -hmm. colors of the uniforms that were worn by the crew, 
So oh the, the, I love uh, the suit that. of rods is red, like the engineering. The suit of cups is blue that matches the science tunics. The suit of cup, the uh, suit of blades is green, matching the uh, green velour command tunics, uh, or the, the green suede command tunics. And the suit of coins is gold, matching the gold tunics. And then we use uh, wow. sort of a dark charcoal with sparkles in it for the black corners of the major arcana cards because the black slacks and, and fabric that they used had a bit of a sparkle to it as well. And uh, you can't see this in the web images because they're kind of shrunk down uh, to fit on the web page, but on the actual physical printed cards, uh, those colors, the, the artwork is printed at very high resolution and you can actually see the texture of the red and gold and blue and, and the other fabrics in those corner colors on the cards. So there's layers upon wow. layers of artwork in these cards. Um, and I'll also mention that uh, most non-Star Trek fans might not know this, but when Star Trek was first created, they filmed, they built the sets, hired the actors, filmed an entire episode before the show sold to TV. And they took that that pilot episode and walked it around to the different networks and used it as a selling point to try to sell it to the networks. That original episode never aired on TV. Mm -hmm. So bits of it were used in other episodes that did air on TV, but the original episode as it stood never aired. And so, because when you talk to diehard Star Trek fans, some of them will say, well, there were 78 episodes. Some will say there were 79 episodes. Some will say there were 80 episodes. Well, there are 79 one of them was this pilot episode. Right. One of them was a two-part episode. So that's why the difference is between these 78, 79, 80 numbers. Uh, we decided to include that unaired pilot episode on two bonus cards, uh, kind of like Jokers in a playing card deck. So yeah. if you scroll on that web page to the gallery, those last two cards with the aliens on them uh, are the two bonus cards, and they represent that originally unaired pilot. Wow. And even awesome. the colors, everything. and even the everything. colors in the corners on those <laughs> cards are representing the colors of the tunics in the pilot episode. So it's ridiculous the layers of 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 artwork that uh, our artists put into this. Uh, all those little symbols and glyphs and things that had to match the same uh, uh, look and feel of the Star Trek font that we use, and so on. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. the the detail. Uh, I am so, so pleased with the beautiful way that the artist uh, uh, was able to get these cards to look. We're so proud of these. Yeah, you should be. You really should be. I mean, this is a uh, – it's it's stunning, and it's really kind of interesting that, you know, it, you came into the tarot world through something that you already loved, and yet you really, really honored – the tradition we all hold so dear and i i just want to thank you for that thanks we uh we we try yeah. very hard our 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 mindset is that if we're going to sell something we want to make it of a good enough quality that we would want to buy it <laughs> yeah i right? even like the back <laughs> the the galaxy backs with uh with the symbol you know and hey how here's you a fun piece so of trivia it's reversible yeah. Here's a fun piece of trivia. That little nebula that's on the back of the card, that is a real nebula. That's not something that we made up. That's a real thing. You can go to uh, Google and find the NASA JPL images of the Hubble Variable Nebula that actually does wow. look like that. The that's Star Trek, amazing. you know, arrowhead uniform symbol. We did that's that's life imitating art, man. We didn't even make that up. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Adam, thanks for this deck, and, and thanks for being on the show. Everybody head over to StarTrekTarot.com and check it out. And, uh, God, we might have to have you back because there's so much to talk about more in <laughs> the story. Well, thanks. And... It's amazing. You know, I could talk for hours about all this stuff. Don't You get me started, I could talk for hours about all this. <laughs> oh, great. Well, we'll, de we'll definitely have you back because we need to get the word out on this. I mean – I, I can see where this could be somebody's, like, really go-to deck even, doing readings for so, people, you know. 
absolutely. Well, I, could, I could definitely see it being that way for 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 Dax, <laughs> for sure, too. And I just I just am stunned by how um, how amazing this is, how beautiful the artwork is, how detailed everything is, how it all makes sense, and how now we have a whole new. Uh, table of correspondences, Star Trek episodes to to tarot cards. <laughs> um, is the deck available now? It is, right? They can go to the website, they can order um, it, and it, well, what? it is asterisk, and it it breaks my heart to say this. We were originally uh, planning to release these uh, in the summer for, for the big summer fan convention seasons, Comic Con, Dragon Con, and so on, and then COVID killed everything. Uh, the, yeah convention that we were targeting the star trek las vegas convention got pushed off to december and so we pushed our release plans back to the fall and we're targeting december and now the uh, december uh las vegas star trek convention has been canceled and postponed to next summer so it's i could go into the details but uh the various parts of our production chain we have uh, we're printing casino quality cards. We're printing plastic cards. We're printing, you know, paperback and hardcovers and and those cool tricorder boxes that you like. Um, but juggling all of that and keeping it, keeping the quality up and keeping the price down and keeping it targeting the release of the conventions all simultaneously in COVID. COVID just pulled one rug out from under us too many. We were we were gritting our teeth and hanging in by our fingernails for December, but when December got canceled. We've had to temporarily suspend plans to release in December, and we're going to shoot for again mm-hmm. next summer. Uh, we're not giving up on this. These cards, this has been a, a, a labor of love for us for too long. Uh, we are going to see these through. Uh, they're going to be available on the market. Uh, just, I'm sorry to say that you won't be able to get them into your hands in December the way that we had originally hoped. Mm-hmm. Um, they will be available so- probably in the spring. Uh, we're going to, we're going to have a page on Amazon where we'll be able to sell them. Uh, we're going to hopefully have connections with a few other people to get some, some more promotional, uh, information, because like you said, people are, are completely surprised that this is even happening because we haven't really been able to successfully get the word out and maybe a few extra months will give us a little bit more time to do that. Uh, so you can still please go to our website. Um, we're going to have, uh, a link on there where you could uh, sign up with an email address so that we can notify you the minute they become reavailable again. Uh, it's going to happen. It'll just take a few Perfect. more months. Right. And I'm I'm sorry, well, COVID actually, is just. Yeah, I know it, it's for everybody, but I was just going to say it's actually going to be perfect timing because we said we want to have you back on the show, so we'll have yeah. you back on when they're coming available. You know, it'll be perfect timing, and you know. <laughs> Let's do that. That would be great. Awesome. Well, (laughs) thanks for being on with us, and uh, we will chat with you soon, Adam. Yeah. I'll be here. Thanks so much. (laughs) And uh, live long and prosper to you. Yes, live long long and prosper. (laughs) All righty. Wow, that was fun. I can't wait to have Mark back on. Uh, I mean, Adam <laughs> back on. Adam. Goes by Adam. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be awesome. It'll be good timing, you know, especially if it's, uh, it's around spring. You know, we could do another episode or two. You know, uh, maybe when he's gonna hit the convention in the summer or beyond. You know, we could do another one. And you know, just yeah. really want to get word out about this because, you know, Star Trek fan or not, there is. So much detail and thought going into this, which is lacking in so many decks out there, you know, that it, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's a whole, I mean, you, you should definitely get, you know, when it becomes available, get the deck with the guidebook because you're going to want to read through all these stories and see how everything connects because it, it's just brilliant, brilliantly done. We got to thank Get that. the deck with the guidebook and, and the original series DVD set. <laughs> you know, that's how I would do it. Yep, yep. I I definitely want to want to get the limited edition uh, tricorder box one because it's just so cool. I got to have that. It is. Anyway, uh, wow, wow. It was mind blowing. 
<laughs> mind blowing. Mind blowing. Yeah, we 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 figured uh, we figured all, only a half hour, but uh, this is con- <laughs> we've got there 50 minutes so much. because so much to talk about. Yes, but we are going to squeeze in a call or two, and uh, Mary's going to let us know about the uh, next episodes coming up on the network as well. You want to do that now, Mary? Yes, I do. So on the Psychic Talk Radio Network, this week we've got our next show is going to be on Monday, November 16th. It's the Wisdom of the Soul show with your host, Janice Fuchs. That's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. It'll be followed on Wednesday by the Compassionate Light Healing and Guidance Hour with your host, Catherine Hahn. And she's going to be talking about you are created in the image of the divine is her topic. And after that, Friday, November 20th, the doctors are in show. Dax will be back with his co-host, Dr. Rose Wilkerson, and they'll be doing open lines, many readings, and life coaching all show long. And then you and I will be back, Dax, next Saturday to do open lines and many readings all show long, too. And then Sunday, it's the Magic Universe with host Sharona Rapsick talking about new habits, new life in just 28 days with her special guest, Edwiga Gilbert. And all of our shows are at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and you can find them all by going to psychictalk.net forward slash upcoming. Awesome sauce. Yes, and, uh, and some folks were asking how to get a hold of Adam and of course, you can go to the website. I'm sure there's somewhere on the website you can contact these folks. And on Facebook, uh, it's the name of their company. Uh, it, it starts off like telephone, T-E-L-E, tele, and K-I-A-D. So it's facebook.com slash T-E-L-E-K-I-A-D. And you contact them through Facebook or the website, StarTrekTarot.com is the easiest to remember, so you don't have to remember that uh, company name. Go to StarTrekTarot.com. Awesome sauce. And uh, let's see. We, we still have some folks holding on the phone lines here that have been holding throughout the show. Uh, I, uh, do you still want to do your card of the day? Yeah. I just really wanted to give a, a, a quick shout-out to our uh psychic talk radio um facebook group where i post a card of the day every day and today's card is from the garden a field guide to garden dragons by arwen lynch with beautiful artwork by stanley morrison and the organizing that this is a good time to get organized you know we don't the holidays aren't quite here yet a lot of stuff going on in the country you know organize your closet figure out you know, what you need and what you don't need and just, you know, be ready when the when mm. the new year finally comes along. <laughs> and you can find that card of the day uh, by going to um, psychictalk.net forward slash Facebook. You, we have a, you'll see our page. You can um, join our group and uh-huh. join in the conversation. Yeah, and I, I actually reposted that out. That's the one with the dragon on it, isn't it? Yeah, they're, uh, I love, love that. This deck. They're, they're you, all you know how I'm big adorable. in the dragon. I know, and Arwen Lynch wrote the guidebook for it. Oh, Arwen, we love Arwen. Um, yes, we do. I was going to say I I sent it out to all of our pages. We have a Tarot Guild page. We have a Psychic Talk. I also shared it onto the Tarot Guild group. 6,300 members, folks, on Facebook, uh, plus our Twitters. You know, I've got my Dax Carlisle Twitter and then, of course, uh, twitter.com slash tarot guild. You can follow us awesome. on Twitter, and, you, and you'll find her card of the day. My card of the day was the Seven of Swords. You know, so, swords are thoughts and ideas, and this is a card about uh, insights and strategy, tactics, cunning, manipulation, evasiveness, stealth, you know, things going on behind the scenes. So just keep an eye out for that is what I'm going to say for that card for this day. Oh, right. Yeah, I like that. 
I got to gather my deck back together now that I did the card of the day and shuffle. And we're going to see if we can squeeze a call or so in before the end of the show here. Uh, Area code 330. They've been waiting the longest. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? 330. Leslie from Manhattan, Kansas. Hey, Leslie, what's going on? Yes, I've been having having several finalist interviews for positions, and my best shot, maybe the one I interviewed for this past week was in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I do believe I'm going to get offered a position somewhere before Christmas. Do you see that happening? Mm. Let's see. Taking the look here. Oh, wow. Speaking of that uh, Seven of Swords, I got all these other Sevens coming up now. We've got the Seven of Wands coming up. We've got the, the Seven of Cups coming up. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's a very muddled answer here. It's kind of, you know, I'm not getting a strong yes or no on this. I was asking specifically about that one that you mentioned there in Nebraska. Um, and the I mean, there's some really positive cards like the the Ten of Cups and uh, Judgment. Um, it could really go either way. It looks like there's a little bit of, um, uh, I don't know, something left to be done here. And the Judgment card for me is the Cosmic Wake Up Call, you know, and uh, an Awakening uh, and so, you know, you might need to take a little deeper look at some of these options. I think uh, that's why the Seven of Cups is probably showing up. It's a, it's a card of a lot of different options, uh, choices, uh, uh, often, you know, fantasy, illusion, reflection, sometimes confusion, you know. And so it's getting clear on what you really want so the universe knows what to bring you is, you know, ultimately the the situation. Mary, what are you getting on this? You know, um, I, see, I, I didn't focus on the, on the Nebraska job, just that idea of, you know, getting something by, you know, December, by the end of the year. Right. Um, oh, good, and yeah. I, do, I do think that that's going to happen. What's interesting to me is that the death card comes up first. And then mm-hmm. I end with the full card. So it's like there's a transition, though, you know, if, and that can be, you know, going from, you know, where you're at right now to into like a new job or whatever. And it may even be something that you don't really expect or that you're not thinking of. Sometimes when the full card comes up, it, it, it talks about surprises or, you know, things that, you know, we wouldn't have predicted happening. So it could be that this this job that you get is one of the ones you're just not really looking at right now. It might be something that comes up next. Um, and I think that, you know, having, you know, the great thing about the death card, it is that card of transformation, transition, endings, and beginnings. And then mm-hmm. it's being followed by, by the full card, which often is associated with new beginnings, journeys, um, taking a leap of faith. I, I feel like uh, it's saying like, yeah, you know, it's not like things just end, that new beginnings being shown right there. So, yes, I do think something's going to come through for you, and I think it's unexpected for some reason. Mm. Yeah, I, I do. I definitely, you know, reshuffling and asking specifically about, you know, towards the end of the year, I get a strong yes on that. And then – in my original spread, yeah, that's the feeling I was getting, you know, was that it, 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 something else, you know, it, not not yeah. maybe these uh, the most recent ones that that Leslie has applied for. So I hope that helps you out, Leslie. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We got to see if we okay. can squeeze in some more calls here. Let's see. Uh, area code nine one seven is calling in. Yeah, Call it. What's your one way What's your name? Where are you calling from? Are you there? Hello. 917? Yes, I'm here. What? Hey, my name is Tim, and I'm calling from New York. Hi, Tim. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for taking my call. Really good. Great to I've... chat with you. 
What do you want to okay, chat about today? Sorry. Oh, okay. So I'm um, I'm consistently trying to focus myself and meditate uh, nightly with some crystals, doing some grounding, trying to keep the energy up, trying to bring some abundance in. Uh, I was just wondering if you see anything open up or if you had any tips for me on my practice, how I could further my little spirit communication. I'm trying to get that wink back from spirit to aid me along the way. Right. Oh, right. That sounds great. Okay. What you getting, Mary? I'm just, I am getting, let's see, you know, what, what advice is there for you in, on this? And does it show, um, you know, any anything, you know, it's interesting. I feel like part of what's going on also is, um, man, these cards are so bizarre. We've got the Ten of Swords along with the Tower card, and then we'll get into the Six of Cups energy. So I. It, oh, my God, I got the Tower part, card, too. <laughs> it, and to me, when that comes up, sometimes it's saying, like, we've got to tear down some of the things we've built up. With the Ten of Swords, it's like some of our thinking. You know, we need to mm. release it. You know, sometimes the 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 tower card can indicate like a powerful release. They kind of, you know, shakes it up. I think of it like a house of cards where, you know, we've kind of built something up, you know, just with one certain perspective in mind. And we've got to tear it all down in order to like, you know, see what's really in front of us to really have that clarity that we do that meditation and those spiritual practices for. Um, it comes up in the present energy, so maybe that's just part of the practice of what you're doing. And if anything, I would say don't be afraid to let go. And the things that you don't need to let go of, you're going to feel in your heart. With the Six of Cups, it's a card of nostalgia, you know, but but it's also – you know, it's really happening on that emotional level. And so another aspect of this, too, is to embrace that inner child, that childlike quality that sometimes, um, you know, we lose in the world of cynicism, right? We, we lose that. And don't be afraid to play with it. You know, sometimes when we, when we follow, you know, we're trying to really get on the spiritual journey and, and, you know, follow these different practices, we can lose our sense of play in it. We can, we can mm. forget that it doesn't have to be so serious. So I feel like you let it go, release it. And what's, what is meant to stay is going to stay with you because it's really part of who you are at the core. Um, what is Dax getting? Dax, what are you getting? Well, you you pretty much covered it fantastic there. When you were saying letting go, this, my central focus card is the Five of Cups. And one of the meanings of that card is letting go. It's letting go and sometimes, you know, sacrifice to achieve something or unused talent. You know, these are some of the rarer meanings of the card that don't often come up. When I get the Tower card, I you know, I mentioned I got the Tower card like Mary did. Uh, for me, the Tower card is a shift in foundation. So it's a shift in, in beliefs. It, it may require a shift in beliefs. You might be holding on, maybe not consciously, but subconsciously to some uh, belief patterns uh, that are not really serving you in, in what you're doing. And uh, I'm also getting some additional study in these areas. And then in the near future, towards the end of the spread, we've got a new opportunity coming in and a card of celebration, which is looking really, really good. So that's what okay. I'm getting. Hope that helped you out. Okay. Again. Yep. Thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for calling. Awesome. Have a great weekend. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your weekend there, and I think we have time for maybe one more call. We're going to go to area code 720. Call it. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. This is Randy. I'm calling from Colorado. Hi, Randy. Hi. Hi. Um, so lately I've been really concerned about my my twins. They're um, 17. Um, and I just want to know, well, my daughter just, her boyfriend just broke up with her, her love of her, <laughs> from the last two mm. And That happens. I, my husband, lost, my husband lost his job. And I'm really, I, we, I dreamt of them going to college. But I'm really worried about 
next year for them to go. Uh, we applied for colleges where in our mind we're like they're going to college, but I'm, there's a part of me that's like, oh, my God, how are we going to pay for this? Do you see them going to college next year? <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Well, I, I got four uh, – no, I'm sorry. I got five yes cards out of five. I mean, it, it <gasps> looks oh my God. <laughs> really, really good. Um, the cards are indicating that it wants you to take a look at the finance part of it to really, you know, dot all the I's, cross all the T's. Uh, it, it's going to be um, a balancing act, a little bit of holding on and squeaking by and things like that. But, yeah, they're, they're definitely, you know, right there at a transition and, you know, we don't even need the tarot, uh, the tarot cards for that. You know, I mean, if you're 17, 18 years old, that that's a tradition. Uh, I mean, sorry, a, a transition point is what I'm trying to say. But I got the Ten of Swords, which is a card of transition. One door closes, another door opens. And uh, the sun dawning in the background there, uh, I got a lot of two cards showing up. Two is the number of relationships and partnerships and I'm not even sure how that applies exactly right now. So I, think I have I know to do a much means. longer read. My husband and I are but, doing a business together. That yeah. Means, maybe? It could. It very well could. Yeah. So I just wanted to leave that with you that that's coming, you know, out in the cards to concentrate on that as well. Partnership. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's see what Mary good. said. I'm glad. I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. Because they're, they're like straight-A students. They're uh, National Honor Society. They're such good kids. Like, And I yeah, yeah, they're them go, great. want to go to college. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, the, the cards I got are really all positive as far as that. And I even got the Six of Swords, you know, which can be a card of travel. Like you're saying, bye. You know, don't forget to, you know, do all the stuff, you know, like I feel like the person in this deck and the six of swords is like waving goodbye. So I feel like, you know, there's the kids going off to college. Um, Ace of cups, 10 of cups come up, stay in love, you know, stay in the, you know, that energy of love. But what's really interesting to me is the seven of wands at the center of the spread, you know? So yes, boy, you know, there, there's all these externals that are, um, you know, making you worry, you know, and, and you can feel like, how, how is this going to happen? How are we going to make this happen? And the seven wands is about not giving up. It's about standing our ground, keeping our energy up. And no matter what, keep that, keep that eye on the prize. Yeah. You know, when it comes mm-hmm. to the point, Somehow we're going to get them there. I don't know what it's going to be, but we're, whether it's going to be a miracle or something, yeah. we're getting them to college. And that they're are, go- yeah. they are going away this summer. They're traveling overseas this summer. So that could be what you're seeing with the saying goodbye, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm asking about, you know, the the um, going to college thing. And so I, so I think it, it could be both, you know. Um, but I really do think that, you know, the, the main – thing even though it seems like the main thing is the finances it really yeah. sort of is and it's it this is telling me it's like our attitude and our feeling about it and not getting beat down by the stress you know of of thinking how how do we make this happen and and all of the uh you know the the, the external things that can cause you know this just cause difficulty and make us feel like oh it's impossible know that it's not impossible not at all it's like i feel like you guys do this through your sheer will and love and and focus on that goal thank you so much thank Thank you so much thanks for the call randy bye bye awesome awesome well i want to remind everybody that uh All of our shows on the weekends are sponsored by the Tarot Guild, the international organization for tarot lovers, students, and professional leaders since 2004. Yes, we are in our 17th year now. Come visit us at thetarotguild.com. And I want to thank our special guest, Mark Adam Baum. 
And thank you for the Star Trek Tarot. Be sure to go check out the website, StarTrekTarot.com. And anything you want to leave the folks with, Mary? No, just to, you know, have a great weekend, everybody. Make sure you join our Facebook groups, if you haven't, our, our Tarot Guild Facebook group and our Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group. And if you want to book a private reading with me, you can find me easily by going to psychictalk.net forward slash Mary. And if you want to book a reading with Dax, you can find him really easily by going to, wait a minute, you changed it. You're on, yours is on the Tarot Guild now, right? Is it Tarot Guild right. slash Dax? That's it. The TarotGuild.com slash Dax. You can go, go, go right over there and check out my page and you can book a session right there. I do life coaching, hypnotherapy, and tarot and numerology, and it's all there at thetarotguild.com slash DAX. And, of course, we'll be back next weekend. I'll be back next Friday and Saturday, and Mary will be with me on Saturday the 21st. Looking forward to that as well. Yes, me too. Awesome. Awesome sauce. So we want to thank all of our listeners and all of our callers. We don't have a show without you. And thank you, Mary, for being here. And thank you, Dax, and all our folks in the chat post today as well. Yeah, a lot of people in there. Saturday. (laughs) Yep. Bye, everybody. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen.